Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube audiobook series for The Forbidden Truth, written by Abby Mathias. I am Darius and today I will be introducing Chapter 26. If you missed Chapter 25, links in the description below along with the playlist. And fair warning, there are sexual harassment issues in this one. And if you get triggered by that, here is your warning. But otherwise, we will continue on with Chapter 26, Satanic Intentions. As I slept, my mind was clear while my heart beat was steady, calmer than the waves on the ocean, and lighter than a feather. Knowing that I was safe within my boyfriend's arms, embracing him as if he was a stuffed animal, taking in his passion-fruit-scented shampoo, and hearing his steady breathing. Everything drifted me into a deep sleep and allowed me to relax. For a while, it was great, but then I suddenly woke up within a strange room. The first thing that I took in when my eyes opened was a black-tiled ceiling with dimly-lit purple chandeliers hanging above me. It didn't look anywhere near familiar to me, and I grew confused confused as to where I suddenly was. Upon that, I slowly sat myself up to examine the rest of the room. To the right of me, a dark blue fire was crackling while it glowed its nearby surroundings. The mantle had a Roman numeral clock that had lots of numbers on it, while two candles were placed within golden holders and rested upon each side. The wall was also black tile, but peering at it closer, it had purple textures engraved into it. Looking back in front of me, and to the left, I was in some sort of living room. A large glass table was in the middle, while dark purple furniture surrounded it. Dying flowers were also placed in the middle of the table, as if they were up for decoration. All in all, the room looked beautiful, more than what I had seen within my lifetime. Yet as I looked down to see myself, I realized I was in my demon spirit again. Even though I was, I wasn't extremely alarmed by it. I knew this was some weird fantasy that I was in, and I wanted to explore and take in my sights. Even though my sight was obstructed by the dimly lit environment, I know I was definitely in some sort of fancy household. It was almost royalty-like, to be quite honest. It was truly beautiful. Regardless of that, I stood myself up and walked away from the fireplace expecting there to be a back wall. However, there wasn't. It actually opened up into a hallway that ran to the right of me. It was still poorly lit to where I couldn't identify anything. Silence consumed the air as my mind was circling with questions. Where was I? Why was it so dim? And why was I in my demon spirit? Regardless, I wasn't extremely concerned about it. This was some sort of illusion or dream. So it was my time to just wander and allow myself a moment of discovery. With that thought in mind, I began to walk down the dimly lit hallway. As I walked, a slight breeze began to pick up. The farther down I traveled, the more it blew against my body. As I reached about halfway down the hallway, the wind grew too powerful and somehow whisked me back gently to my original destination. Curious as to why that happened, I tried walking down the hallway again. Except this time, I lifted my force field to hopefully shield myself from the rushing air. It worked for a moment as I walked a little further, probably about three-fourths of the way. However, once again, I was whisked by the wind and brought back to the purple and black room. There was something keeping me from traveling outside the area. As to what exactly it was, I wasn't sure. It had to be some sort of force I was unaware of. There was no physical barriers or energies displaying themselves. Just some random, brisk air pushing me away from my initial destination. Yet as I realized that, a sudden flare-up sounded from across the way and grabbed my attention. Peering fully back and next to the fireplace, Two blue torches were now lit along a pair of French doors. It was strange to see as I haven't noticed the doors before. 
They stood taller than me and arched like a majestic castle door. Dark oak wood planks were polished and bonded together using gold metal. As for the doorknobs, they were shaped as some sort of gargoyle head. No, actually. They were shaped like demon heads. Sharp teeth and pointing horns protruding out of their heads. There were no other impactful markings upon the door. Yet with just the sight of that made me nervous. What was beyond that door? Where did it even come from? And why the hell did I want to find out what it was so badly? My curiosity has never peaked this badly ever in my life. Not even when I semi-eavesdropped on Nala's conversation back in November. Something within me wanted to investigate where the doors led to and settle my growing interest. Yet, what if something bad was behind those doors? A monster or a beast of some kind that was hungry for flesh. Yet upon those thoughts, I couldn't help but chuckle a bit to myself. If an animal or person was within that room, it would have made noise by now. I would have somehow been alerted of its presence and warned to stay away. Within this moment, all I heard was the crackling of firewood and flames dancing within their designated places. Coming back to my senses, I decided to approach the door, still with caution for as to what I was going to find next. As I made my way, I slowly grabbed the golden looped handle that was hanging out of the demon's mouth on the left door. It was surprisingly cold within my grasp as I touched it. However, it wasn't a note I focused too much on. There were more important matters to pay attention to than that. Knocking my initial thoughts away for more of them to flood my head, I pulled the door to have it casually drift open. Upon the action, a weird aroma began to sift into my nostrils as a slight wind blew it into my face. Thinking hard and breathing in the smell deeply, I recognized it to be smoke and burning ash. I could recall the smell as I would fill my dad's fire stove that was placed in his garage. It would help warm up the place during the winter and early spring so he could work in a comfortable temperature. Despite that, I was far from being in my dad's garage. Peering my head around the door to look in, more darkness filled my vision as nothing appeared to be lit within the room. Not even the slim lighting from within the living area could shine bright enough for me to catch a glimpse of what was inside. Thinking on my feet, I figured a light would activate or a torch would flare up as soon as I stepped into the room. Yet knowing I would be submerged in blackness made my body grow in fear. I wasn't a fan of the dark to begin with. Not to mention the fact that this place already felt ominous and obscure. However, my mind was fighting against my heart and kept telling me to breathe. To be strong and solve this wondering mystery and find the answers I was seeking. So taking my mind's advice, I took a deep breath or two before stepping myself fully into the next room behind the French doors. The smoky and ashy aroma hit me harder like a ton of bricks, yet I still felt somewhat at ease as I kept recalling the familiar smell, at least for a brief moment, until the door suddenly slammed shut behind me and made me turn around. Instantly, my breathing hitched within my throat while I ran back to the door to push on it. It wouldn't budge. My hands scrambled to grab for a doorknob, yet my hands scattered a long wall no matter where I touched. Then as I was slightly panicked, a deep rumble came from behind me. A growl so low that it shook me to my core. A call that resembled a predator, yet didn't sound like it was hungry. Nevertheless, I froze within my spot and internally panicked. I already tried to escape back to where I came from, but the entryway had ceased or barricaded itself. I was left alone within a dark abyss with a strange creature who knew I was present. An abrupt snap sounded after the growl was finished, then small flare sounds initiated and made me turn to see what the commotion was. My eyes were taking in the sight of candles starting to light on their own. There wasn't just like five. There were lots more. Red and black wax cylinders lined in rows and circled around the room and lit up with magic. However, 
what got my attention the most was a row of candles leading me to something as they made a pathway forward. Once all the wicks were on fire, a giant bed was dimly lit. Why a bed was appearing, I had no clue. Yet my fright was spiked when a final candle was set aflame and lit up Satan's face along with his torso. He was shirtless. Every muscle upon his upper half was grossly visible for me to take in. The devil held the last candle in his left hand while the other one was propped against his spiked-like headboard. Regrettably moving my eyes down to his stomach and waist, a sheet was covering his legs. There was no doubt that he had to be naked. That thought just seemed to swirl in my head and embed itself into my brain. It also didn't help that the smile on his face didn't help calm the idea. His eyes were practically glowing in the dark as they intently stared into mine. This was the monster I was left with. The creature that looked at me like a predator, and I was now the prey, regardless if I liked it or not. Fuck. I whispered, realizing the whole situation I was in. I knew where this dream was leading, and I most certainly didn't like it. I knew I had to wake up soon as I have been in this fantasy for far too long. Plus, my human body will fill itself with fear and force me to wake up. I just had to wait for the moment to come. <laughs> you like what you see. He said with a chuckle. I also like what I see. That dress is extremely flattering upon you. It shows off your delicious curves that you have been gifted. I'm glad the clothing was finally put to good use. I continued to stare at him with wide eyes, not even uttering a breath. I was scared out of my mind. Who would want to engage with their violator? A person who would by no means stop their actions because of the other's well-being. An entity that was powerful enough they can overtake you with just one wrong thing. So there I stayed, frozen and against the backside of the doors, wishing I had never stepped foot into this room. Come here, Miss Davis. I want to see you up close and personal. I promise I won't bite. At least not yet. My body couldn't and wouldn't move, even if I tried. It would fall to the ground before even stepping closer to that monstrosity. However, I didn't have the choice. For the next minute, Satan motioned his finger towards me and curled it towards himself. Upon the action, that strange wind from the hallway blew against my back hard, flying me to the bed without warning. Then, like invisible weights being placed upon them, my feet felt heavy and wouldn't move from their places. Now I was face to face with my enemy and I began to exclaim my panic while fighting the unknown forces keeping me from leaving. What the hell? This needs to stop now. This isn't funny. This dream is turning into a nightmare. I need to wake up. What are you talking about, Abby? Satan questioned. This is too good to be a dream for either of us. This is our reality. Your destiny to be with me. The chosen one that I will call mine. Immediately upon his response, I paused trying to understand his words. Was this really not a dream? Or was this some twisted nightmare that I was having trouble waking up from? Nothing but nonsense was filling my ears. My destiny was not to be with this devil. It was to be with Damien, an actual gentleman that wouldn't treat me like a piece of property and love me unconditionally. Yet before I could say anything more, I was forcefully moved again to the foot of the bed. After that, my head jerked back up to see Satan adjusting himself to be on his knees. The sheet was still covering him, however it covered less of his hips and displayed that no underwear was wrapping around his waist. Sickness began to form in my stomach from the sight, however before I could throw up, he intervened on my thoughts. So tell me, does Darius look this good for you? Would he ever treat you to such extravagant pleasure and luxury? Did you really think he would ever reward you with sex for being a good little succubus? Ew! 
I screamed. I don't want to have sex with Darius. He is like a father to me and I don't think like that about him. That's my point. He wouldn't. But I do know that something significant has happened recently. As to what, I don't really know. But I was hoping that you could tell me before I rewarded you. With his remark in the air, my mind began to recall Darius rekindling with his family. Yet how was that significant to Satan? How would that affect my demon within this realm? And how would Satan know that something big happened? Despite my questions, before I could even ask them, I was suddenly forced to bend down and place my hands on the bed. Gasping from the action, I rapidly lifted my head once more and saw a blue mist spilling out of the devil's hands again. He was controlling me again, and I couldn't stop it. As he made eye contact with me again, he waved his finger for me to come closer. My body gently responded without my permission and began to crawl onto the bed slowly and sexual-like. It was upon that very moment, everything was clicking together, that I truly was living within this moment. This wasn't a dream. This was an actual living nightmare. My breathing hitched in my throat from the sudden horror that filled my body. I was trapped in the same room as Satan and Darius was sleeping with his wife. He didn't know what the hell was going on and there was no rescue for me this time around. My dear, those wings suit you well. Only the strongest of demons can have them. And somehow you sway them to make a man go crazy. I'm not dead. I whimpered. I wouldn't do this for anyone, not even you. But look at you now. With such satanic beauty and power, you hold a special place within my unbeating chest. You are all I think about. After his statement, my body had made its way to the evil overlord and sat itself up on its knees and almost eye level to him. Another smirk widened upon Satan's face as he gazed at me again. His eyes wandered and caressed my skin with his tingling warmth trick. I could feel the scan of his optics, especially when they paused to look at my bust. At that moment, I could feel my skin and nipples slightly burning. So I sacrificed my arms and placed them over my chest to block the sight. At that, a deep huff came from his mouth and his hand grabbed at my right wrist. He yanked it towards him to make my torso follow. The devil was pulling me closer to him and I tried to stop it. I placed my left hand upon his bare chest, desperately attempting to push myself away. Yet the more I resisted, the more a low growl came from his throat. His lips began to pucker and lean in towards mine, but I was not about to let the evilest entity I know kiss upon my lips. However, I didn't know what else to do but sacrifice another part of myself to avoid it. Thinking fast, I stopped pushing away and swayed myself to the right side as he leaned forward quickly. At my movement, his hand landed just below the crook of my neck and I inhaled with fear. His mouth was now on my skin, tainting it with saliva and tongue. He licked my collarbone at first, tasting me as if I was a snack or treat. His left hand still had a hold of my wrist, while his other hand was upon my bare shoulder. He nudged my head with his in order to make it bend farther to the right and expose every inch of my neck. I grunted slightly as a nerve was being pinched, but that didn't stop him from his next devouring action. As he finished licking me, he violently latched his lips onto the base of my neck and began to kiss it ferociously. My stomach began to sicken again at the action as my eyes began to water. I was trying to muffle my whimpers as this was happening, but a few had slipped from my mouth. My slight crying didn't stop him, though. I honestly think he mistook them for moans. For at the next moment, he kept sucking onto my skin, hearing every sound that was made while he made contact with my flesh. Eventually, a tear rolled down my cheek. However, it was quickly ignored after feeling a slight pain upon the area where he was. It jolted me upright again and forced Satan off while he let go of my wrist. Immediately, I brought my hand up to feel what he did. Obviously, his liquid was upon me, which I was disgusted by. 
However, when I looked at my hand, I saw blood streaked upon my fingertips. Here, let me get that for you. He then took my hand again and brought it to his mouth, sticking each one of my fingertips within it slowly to suck up the rest of my blood. Your blood tastes as sweet as you. If you were truly edible, I would eat you all up. What the fuck is wrong with you? You bit me and made me bleed! That hurt! I bet it did. However, you took it like the champ that you are and are surrendering yourself to be mine. I couldn't help but taste you a little. You will be the best bride I have. No, I won't! I will not be your bride! After my shout, he suddenly twisted us 180 degrees and pinned me down onto the bed, my hands high above my head while my legs clenched in fear. My eyes couldn't help but stare into Satan's eyes again as they were filled with lust and desire. Now I knew for a fact what he wanted, and my soul sickened at it immensely. My darling, you look even more beautiful when you're angry. It just makes you more lustful in my eyes. My cock throbs for you, and only you at this point. I need a new bride, one who is strong and beautiful compared to the others. You are wondrous and will fulfill your duties as queen. Stop this now! I am not dead and we both know that! I can't be yours and I never will be! As long as I am with Darius, I will never belong to you! But sadly for you, nobody is here to claim you as theirs. He can't hear you from here. Plus, I am only trying to show you what it will be like to submit to your fate. Right after his statement, he placed his hand upon my breast and squeezed. Then I started to feel my clothes starting to shift and shorten themselves. Lifting my head up, I saw that Satan had once again changed my clothes. Except this time, it was into a black silk lingerie dress. The entire thing was see-through so Satan could get a good look at my exposed body. My breasts were free while my nipples were hard. As for underwear, I suddenly couldn't feel them. Nothing remained hidden to him. At the sight, Satan drooled over me, like a child watching ice cream being scooped. The drool made its way down and dripped onto my legs. I gasped in disgust while my breathing was rapid. I was scared out of my mind and wanted to leave. He was only going to violate me in the worst way possible. And my eyes began to tear up again with despair. Abby Davis. That lingerie has my cock aching for you. Tell me, how tight are you? On a scale of 1 to 66. Tell me what you know, and I will reward you greatly. I don't know what you're talking about, you psychopath! I screamed. But you do. And I'll make sure that you tell me after our little playtime together. Abruptly, his hand began to spread my legs apart, exposing my opening. I gasped again in fear as I continued to look at Satan's face. His hand brushed my inner thigh and slowly began to lower itself down to my undercarriage. Yet as I felt his cold touch, I began to squirm and refuse, crying out for him to stop and let me go. However, he pulled my hair back to the pillow and whispered in my ear again. You will be mine, Miss Davis. You will be my queen and become Mrs. Kernod, the Dark Queen of Hell. It will be a pleasure to ravish you. His hand lowered even further down my skin, and I kept trying to fight my restraints. I cried and screamed out loud, calling out for help. Yet before anything else happened, I felt a sudden rush of air, and I fell hard onto the floor. Peering around me again, I was on a carpet floor with couches, a recliner, and a rocking chair present. An entertainment center was also present with beautiful knickknacks. I was somehow back in Damien's house again, except I was in his living room instead of his bed. Eventually, I looked down at myself to see I was in my demon spirit, my red majestic dress back to its originality. However, as I felt my skin 
the bite mark that Satan gave me was still upon my left shoulder. Everything that I thought I dreamed was real, and I was tainted by the devil. I practically cheated on Damien when I didn't even want to. Satan has claimed me as his own, and I couldn't do anything to stop it. With everything crashing onto me all at once, my eyes filled with tears as I lost control of my emotions. For within that moment, I remained crumpled up in a ball and wailed loudly, traumatized, and filled to the brim with terror. As I slept in my wife's bed, I had no dreams come to me or show themselves. I was strictly within a black void of peacefulness, finally tranquil with myself and knowing I made right with my family once more. However, sometime during the night, I was woken up by some sort of sound. I didn't know exactly what it was. However, my eyes opened and listened intently to hear the noise again. Yet after a few seconds, things were quiet. My wife was under the covers and turned towards me sleeping, and I couldn't help but gaze at her. She was beautiful in every way, almost hypnotizing without even trying to be. Yet before I could start to brush her hair and bask more within the moment, I heard a loud wail and whimper coming from outside the room. I immediately jerked myself up and gasped in surprise. Something was in the house. Nala quickly woke up from the abruptness and took a sharp inhale of breath as well. However, as I listened closely to it, I realized that the cries I was hearing was from Abby within her demon spirit. Something was terribly wrong, and I grew alarmed and panicked. I have never heard her cry in such a way, with such distress and terror that it stabbed me through my heart, wrenched it until all of my fear was oozing out of it and overfilling my body. With dread and hysteria, I lifted myself off the bed and bolted to the closed door. Darius, what the hell is that? Nala screamed. I didn't answer her before I tore the door open and ran out the room. Abby! I cried through the kitchen. The screams got louder as I made my way to the living room. Once I made the corner around the counter, I saw her over the couch as she was crying on the carpet. Instantly upon the sight of her, I ran faster and hopped over the couch to land at her side. Abby, sweetheart, what happened? What's the matter? I asked with major concern, kneeling down and trying to hold her face. Dad! Damien cried, coming up the stairs. Abby won't wake up! He then ran into the living room and saw his girlfriend on the floor crying. Abby, what's going on, my love? He said right after kneeling by her feet. Don't fucking touch me! She screamed while swatting her body limbs. Upon her reaction, I stood up and grabbed my son to get him out of her reach. Dad, stop! She needs us! Don't pull me away from her! Damien, this is beyond what you can do to help her. Something happened, and I need to make sure you stay safe. Be helpful and stay by your mother. Make sure she stays calm. I instructed setting him down behind the couch. At that, Nala ran out from the kitchen and ran to us in distress. What the hell happened to Abby? Why is she screaming like that? I don't know, and that's what I need to figure out. You two stay here so you don't get hurt. When you're in the clear, I will motion you over. She isn't going to hurt us, Dad. None of us know that. A person is very unpredictable when they are upset as she is. Plus, I don't need any of her powers acting up and hurting you two. Trust me, being electrocuted by her isn't fun. Now, for the love of everything, stay here until I say it's okay. After my response, I turned myself around and slowly made my way back to my protector child. She was shaking from head to toe while her skin seemed extremely pale. Wails of cries still came from her, and my chest kept feeling panicked and sorrowful for what happened, even though I didn't know what occurred. However, that still didn't change the fact that I was going to do everything in my power to find out. Abby, it's me, Darius, your protector demon. You're all right. I slowly raised my hands to show I wasn't a threat to her, and she gradually raised her head to me, her eyes full of tears. As she did that, 
I was able to see that she had a bite mark upon her shoulder that was bleeding at a good rate. Nala, go get a wet rag for me. She's hurt. She's hurt? Nala questioned. Now is not the time to ask me. Go get the wet rag and the anesthetic. After that, I heard her bare feet run on the kitchen floor towards the bathroom. Darius? She stuttered. At her mentioning my name, I immediately kneeled down to her side again and spoke out. Yes, yes, Abby, it's me. You're safe now, I'm here. Nothing will harm you anymore. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. But can you please try and tell me what happened? At my statement, she began to hyperventilate again, and she collapsed into my arms. Instantly, I caught her and pulled her into my chest to cry. This girl was hurting so bad, and she was in dire need of assistance. Something had truly screwed with her mentally, and she was hesitant to even say anything. However, I was able to figure out her issue thanks to the lovely power of memory. At that moment, a visual started to fill my optics of a black and purple room with furniture and firelight. From there, I saw every last detail that she experienced. The hallway that kept dragging her back to the room, the bedroom doors that randomly appeared, Satan's actions in ways he violated my human and caused her to collapse into insanity. My eyes saw every last bit. I even saw the clothing he changed her into before she teleported up to Earth again. How in the world she did that, I have absolutely no clue. Yet I was forever grateful that she was not fully violated and forever corrupted by the devil himself. After the vision went away, nothing but anger and terror filled my body. He purposely dragged Abby into all of this because he knows something important happened to me. However, he has absolutely no idea what it is. As to how he knows was another mystery to me. Despite that, my deepest concern at this point was the crying child within my arms. Upon the end of my reflections, my human began to speak again. I tried to stop him, but he just kept pushing. He forced me down. He made me cruel to him. He made me act out and sacrifice my skin for his lips. I feel so filthy and disgraceful. I practically cheated on Damien without even consenting to it. Don't you dare go and say that, I exclaimed. None of that was your fault, and Damien will understand that. It was not your fault that Satan dragged you down to hell while you were sleeping to try and seduce you. That motherfucker did what? Immediately I turned my head to him and shook my head. I scolded him with an aggressive facial expression and he got the hint. He instantly shrunk back a bit and changed his tone. Abby, sweetheart, I know none of this is your fault and I will not see you any differently because of this. He is a violator. You were the victim. You said so yourself. You didn't want to do anything with him. I understand. After that, Abby stayed still, clinging to my chest while she wrapped me within a hug. I tightly hugged her back and swore one final thing. This will never happen again. And I swear that to you. The next time I see that shithead, He's dead meat. After that, Nala hurried back with the rag and anesthetic. As my human stayed silent, I waved my hand over to my family, and they slowly came over to aid my protector child in her hour of fright. As for me, I held her close and festered in the ideas of killing Satan for all he has done to us. This has been Chapter 26. Satanic intentions from the book The Forbidden Truth. Tune into the next video for the next chapter. <laughs> Goodbye.